How's it going, everyone? This is your astrology horoscope for Monday, July 29th, 2024. I'm astrologer Alex Skiles, and welcome to the Moon Base. Hope you guys had a great weekend. It's good to be here with all of you. We're stepping into some very nervy, unsettling, exciting territory with this moon in Taurus, which really wants to ground itself and feel good. But with Venus approaching... It's square towards Uranus with the moon here. The moon will square Venus right before it makes its conjunction with Uranus. So this triggers a lot of Venus-ruled energy. Of course, the moon's exalted in Taurus, so it really wants to feel good. And this Venus in Leo really wants to have fun, right? But there's a big kind of check-in and a big challenge that is going to be triggered here and that we've been feeling um, that tension and that energy and that electricity building up the past few days. But now with this moon um, making its conjunction with Uranus today, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start to trigger it. And this will trigger that Mars-Uranus conjunction that we just had because it's at 26 degrees. And then the Venus will make it square to Uranus at 26 degrees. So you know, this whole Mars Uranus is, is still in play here, and this moon is going to trigger it, you know. So we're going to feel more ripple effects of that Mars Uranus that we had two weeks ago. And Venus will trigger it as well, and I think this is going to affect the financial markets. I think, you know, this is not a, a day particularly, or this week, as Venus and Uranus are preparing for their their clash here this isn't a week to take risks you know or let the ego you know the venus and leo it's like nah fuck it you know i got it i always i always win like you know this isn't the vibe this week right you know this moon in taurus even with this electric uranian tension building it's reminding us to play it cool keep it grounded of course mercury and virgo you know, helping us really patiently look at things and look at the details and look at the facts before we jump into anything because this Venus and Leo really just wants to fucking jump, right? It really wants to take the leap. And, of course, Mars and Gemini is just like, you know, I got to fucking, you know, my ADHD just kicks in and I need to be stimulated with something new every fucking five seconds so I have to, you know, move all over the place and, you know, constantly move the energy. But this, you know, Moon and Taurus uh, is like, hey, we need to, you know, stay as focused and consistent as we possibly can because we're on a fucking ride right now. We're on a roller coaster and we can't let, you know, the ego kind of blind our... Uh, movement forward or blind us from the truth you know of where we're what we're really going through so more things are going to start to pop out this week this mars uh gemini square that uh mars and gemini uh building with its square towards mercury and virgo and its ruling signs so two mercury ruled signs you know getting ready to uh square off in two different places so mars being in a mercury ruled sign Mercury being in its ruler. So words, we're going to see a lot of heated debates, a lot of heated discussions, and you know, start to come out. And facts are going to start to reveal themselves and bubble up to the surface. Of course, with Mercury just coming off of that in conjunct to Pluto, where a lot of secrets, like there's more information, there's more secrets that need to be revealed. You know, and we felt that coming into the weekend. You know, we can see it in the collective and we can see it like there's more shit to the story and what we're being told isn't, you know, necessarily the whole picture. So there's going to be more things that are going to bubble up here and definitely in our personal lives, like more personal issues and more Venus relationship issues, you know, that with this Venus square Uranus that are going to really be triggered here and words can get fucking intense with these squares building with Mercury and Mars preparing to square and Venus and Uranus preparing to square and things can just, you know, you know, the reality, like things, reality was one way, 
there's a clash and then all of a sudden the reality is completely different. Just of course of what happened, you know, two weeks ago with the Mars Uranus that's being triggered today. Um, you know, shots fired, the world was one way. Shots fired, all of a sudden the world is totally different. The vibe is totally different. Like we're gonna, we're being pulled back into a whole nother frame here. I feel like as we go through this week and you know, something in the financial front is, you know, getting triggered, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, definitely not a week to take risks. We want to be extra cautious, extra cautious spending money, extra extra cautious, you know, with, um, you know, ex being too over the top, you know, or letting your words uh, become too heated, you know, and not keeping you know, a level head with things, you know, with this Mercury Mars square that's building with this Venus Uranus. It's like, this is a lot of unpredictable tension, you know, and words can really start to fucking fly. And things that are going to come out in our relationships, things that are going to come out and come to the surface in the collective are really going to trigger people as these squares really tighten up here. Um, so, we want to prepare for that. And of course, Chiron going retrograde, it's like, man, things sometimes aren't always what they look like, you know, but we're seeing where there are, are still more opportunities for healing to take place. You know, like the whole fucking Olympic thing, like that shit is weird. Like, I don't know what it is, you know, but it's like, it, it's very apparent that there is a collective identity issue where just you know not feeling comfortable with who you are or what your avatar is or you know not seeing yourself for who you truly are you know and other people see you one way you see yourself another way and whatever end of the spectrum it is positive or negative you know especially with the south node in libra and what we went through with chiron north node and the eclipses it's like you know we're being mirrored by our relationships, you know, and constantly being reminded um, from the other perspective, from the other party in, in, in the relationship, like the what we're getting from the other side is the reflection back of what we're projecting. And we may not always see that. And Chiron Retrograde is waking us up once again, to that space. And of course, Chiron is going to retrograde across where it just went through with the eclipses and with that Mercury retrograde in Aries. And of course, Mercury is getting ready to go retrograde here in Virgo and go back into Leo. So there's a lot of that energy coming up. And of course, Mercury retrograde is, you know, kicking into gear. And of course, as Mercury is preparing for the square to Mars while it's, you know, slowing down very quickly here. Um, it won't be long. You know, this is where when the verbal conflicts, you know, surface and it's like these things aren't going to be resolved right away. You know, these triggers, the, the things that are going to be triggered this week in our lives and in the collective, like they're not going to be resolved <clears throat> at an instant moment, you know. And of course, with Pluto, it's just like, we got to figure this shit out now. You know, we got to really like get to the bottom of it now. And it's like, with this Mercury retrograde period, we're about to enter into especially with Mercury going retrograde in a Mercury-ruled sign while squaring Mars and Gemini with Mars in a Mercury-ruled sign. It's like, you know, words aren't very clear yet, and people aren't saying, you know, people, are, people can tend to say things that they don't really mean, you know, or say things that are untrue, which are being claimed to be factual, you know. So that's that's going to come up a lot, you know, and people who are playing both sides of the of the field here is the, you know, with Mars and Gemini, it's like that's going to come out to the surface, you know. And with Mercury and Virgo, it's like it wants to get all the details and it wants to clear things up and wants to 
you know, organize everything, but it's, we're not going to have all of the pieces yet, you know. So whatever triggers are triggered this week, this is, we have to prepare that this is a longer process that we're going through, through this Mercury retrograde, which is a three-week period. And of course, getting back to <clears throat> Mercury coming out of its shadow and fully being out of the retrograde window um, can take over a month, you know. A month and a half. So <clears throat> we just have to rem be prepared, you know. And it, and I guess too, that's really once we really get through that cycle, that's going towards the eclipses. So the eclipses and what's going to trigger and how the course and direction is going to change because these eclipses are in cardinal signs. It is about the direct the directionality of where we're going and what we're doing and you know <clears throat> i think and we can't leave out the jupiter square saturn that's building too so we have a lot of squares that are that are building they're not quite there right jupiter square saturn we have venus square uranus and mercury square gemini you know this is you know there's a fixed square building and <clears throat> these there's you know two mutable squares that are building, you know, two with personal planets involved. So, you know, we'll see these things happen and manifest in our physical world. And I think I said something like, like this the other day. It's like when the outer planets are making squares with the personal planets, it's like things do happen physically in our reality quicker, you know, when those moments are triggered, especially with Uranus especially with Mars that we just saw two weeks ago. That was very rapid, you know. So the Jupiter-Saturn square, you know, is more outward in our conscious, you know, and, in, in you know, a more outward level. But this Venus and Mercury making squares to outer planets, like we're really going to feel it on a personal and physical level, you know, in our relationships and, and our thinking and in our communication, you know, finding the right words to say, you know, discerning fact, fiction, and truth. And, you know, also, you know, just, just simply keeping it real. And I think the moon in Taurus, while these things are all kind of building up at once, this moon in Taurus is reminding us that when, even when things get tense, unpredictable, the nerves are hard to settle with this Iranian energy. <clears throat> you know, it's like we just have to be present, be in the moment, and just enjoy where we're at, you know, even when there's problems to solve. And of course, with Mercury and Virgo, like, it, that really helps a lot of, with problem solving, you know. Of course, with Mercury going retrograde, like, there is a big problem to solve. I, th I think, you know, and it's really going to require some mental focus and attention and fortitude as we go through this, because, of course, Jupiter in Gemini in a Mercury ruled sign, Mars in Gemini in a Mercury ruled sign, and, of course, Mercury in Virgo, the, these squares that are building and that tension and these challenges, you know, these are very much, you know, mercurial ruled. Mercury is dominating in, right now. So there's so much mercurial energy in the sky at the moment. <clears throat> and so we really have to think. We really have to use our mind. We really have to use our fucking brains <laughs> and, you know, solve these issues. Because with Saturn and Pisces, it's teaching us we can't just let the, the emotional stuff just run the show. We can't let the subconscious run the show. Right. You have to awaken to a more conscious state and be aware of the subconscious patterns, and you know, so we can actually expand our reality uh, in a much more truthful way with Jupiter and Gemini and, and expand our environment, you know, because if we can expand our immediate environment, then we have a foundation where we can actually move beyond, which Jupiter really wants to be in Sag you know, helping us expand beyond. But at this moment, it's like we have to expand our environment and focus on what's right in front of us. 
but not let the subconscious stuff, you know, play out over and over that just carries us into these wormholes and then you get stuck and then you snap out of it. You know, I've been feeling that lately, even especially, you know, with the you know, your phone. You just get stuck in your phone. So Neptune and Pisces are the twelfth house rules screens, you know, the visual aspect, you know, of that illusion. So it is too. It's just like spacing out and getting stuck in it. And it's just like all of a sudden you like it's like a sudden shift of like, oh fuck. And you just kind of toss your phone and say, like, I got to get off this shit. So that kind of stuff, just being aware of even when it happens, at least we can at least uh, find some awareness in the moment and make a difference and make a change in the moment. So that's what Saturn and Pisces is really teaching us is to be more aware of those subconscious patterns as they play out to grab them in real time and that's what Saturn is this is time real time reality real time we have the queen of wands so it, you know it, it is that kind of once in a you know blue moon or once in a lifetime or you, you know that kind of intuitive uh deja vu kind of energy it reminds me of the, like the black cat like the like the deja vu like in the matrix where it's like oh shit like you know when you see a black cat in the matrix and you experience deja vu and that's like a a sign that something is near you know you got to protect yourself so it is using that instinct to really help direct and guide the magic that is coming through because you know there is a lot of electric energy right now so it is like putting out that wand like a rod to receive that electrical pulse but it is like having your senses up of like where you need to protect yourself or protect your energy or protect your whatever your soul so and I think, too, going through these mutable squares like this is really going to help us awaken um, to reality in a way that we haven't felt, in my opinion. I would love to hear other astrologers' opinions, but we haven't gone through any tense mutable squares like this since... Um, Saturn and Sag squaring Neptune, which was unbelievable. 2017? Um, 20, yeah, 2017, I believe. Like, that was, yeah, 2016, 2017. That was really wild. That was a far-out trip, you know, and I guess when we had Jupiter and Sagittarius in 2019, that was another fucking trip, too. But now it's like we're getting so much tense heavy but also expansive like we're gonna learn a lot from these mutable squares that we're going through with jupiter saturn there's a lot to be learned here big spiritual lessons that are coming through here that we can really transmute into reality you know and that very you know mercurial gemini kind of way where it's very just matter of fact so these lessons that we are going through through these mutable squares are really going to help us channel these spiritual lessons that, you know, sometimes are hard to find words for. I think these challenges are going to help us be able to find words for things that we may not always be able to find the words for. So hope you guys have a wonderful Monday and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace out.